Ariel Hawani in Las Vegas, just 24 hours removed from the Ultimate Fighter Live final episode. And we are being joined by one of the finalists, Michael Chiesa, who won on Friday night and is now, it feels like, eating normal food for the first time, if we can call this normal. You've got uh, yogurt, bacon, uh, fake eggs, some <laughs> other stuff. How exciting, how exciting is this for you right now? This is very exciting. I'm sorry if my manners aren't here. I just came from a house of 16 men, and uh, manners kind of left the door for uh, three months so excuse me <laughs> it's fascinating watching you guys just mingle here with the media and, and, and see this food it's like almost like watching animals released from the zoo into the public is that what this feels like a little bit I mean there was a lot of good cooking in the house uh, you know tickle is a good cook and you know he would take it upon himself to cook a huge pot of ribs when everyone's cutting weight and uh, you know there was definitely some smorgasbords in the house but uh, yeah getting out here I haven't eaten all day so I'm just freaking getting after it <laughs> What does it feel like to finally be done with this whole process? And now you just have one more fight. Of course, it's not officially done. You still have to win. But you're, you're, you're sort of released now. You got your phone back. You could talk to your family. You moved on to the Palms. You're no longer in the house. What does that chapter feel like, you know, ending that chapter? You know, it was so hard being in the house because, you know, especially like with the Lawrence fight, you know, every guy in the house is very tough. But with the Lawrence fight, it was so hard because I had nothing. I had no outlet. You know, the only thing I had was my thoughts. And, you know, I dwelled on the fight so much. And, uh... You know, getting out of the house is nice because I can just kind of get back in my element. You know, music's always been a very big thing for me with my training. It's been kind of like my getaway, so it's just nice, like, going into the biggest fight of my life. I went from being secluded from everything to now getting everything back. So, you know, just spiritually, man, I'm, like, feeling great. I feel very confident coming to this fight. It just feels good to get out of the house. It was a, definitely a learning experience. I think I grew up being in the house and kind of, you know, it was, it was definitely a good experience, but I'm definitely glad it's over. Would you ever do it again? No, man. I say no, but if the UFC was to call me and ask me, you know, I'm here to do what they want. So if they called me and asked me, I'd do it. But right now, no. What was the first thing you did when they, they sort of released you to the public, got your phone and, and all your belongings and, and let you go? What was the first thing that you did? Oh, absolutely. Called my mom, I, 100%. And it was funny because I, I had locked my account for the three months so I'd have to pay on it and as I was unlocking it my mom was already calling me oh, wow. so it, it was so coincidental because I was going to call her anyway so literally as I'm on the phone with the automated services my mom's already you know beeping in calling me so uh yeah I definitely talked to my mom was first priority and then I went to In-N-Out Burger you know, three months ago, not a lot of people knew who you were in the MMA world, and now you sort of, you know, you poured your heart out in front of America, and we really got to know you very well, almost perhaps even more so than any of the other guys because you went through that tragedy. Did it help, you know, being in front of the cameras, having something to do, just being sort of removed from your family, or, you know, were you able to see a silver lining or feel a silver lining in all of this? Well, there's really no point in trying to hide it, you know. It's just uh, going through that experience. It's the hardest thing I've ever went through in my life, you know. Uh, losing my dad under these circumstances, being away from him and just everything that went with it. You know, I just figured there's no point in hiding it. I might as well just let everybody see it how it is. You know, I'm not, just because we're fighters doesn't mean we can't cry, especially in a time when you lose someone significant in your life, like what my dad was to me. So, uh, you know, I just kind of let it all hang out. I don't think many people would judge. And uh, if they did, you don't have a heart or you have family problems. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was tough, man, but the one thing that I can say I was blessed with was every single guy in the house was super supportive on both sides, you know. Everybody was super, you know, everybody was there for me when I needed it most on both teams. So even at all the coaches, you know, Dominic grabbed me right out of the shoot and was just like, hey, you know, you're doing all right. So it was just good that everybody, you know, was in a good, in a good environment with good people. Otherwise, it kind of would have made it a little bit harder. How close were you to not coming back? You know, once you went home and were around your family, and, and please continue eating, I feel yeah, bad that I'm... Uh, <laughs> how close were you to, to not coming back and just saying, this is not the right time for me? It was never an option. You know, uh, me and my dad, we had gone through this so many times, talking, you know, this is the plan, no matter what, you know, we're going to stick to it no matter what happens, and, uh, you know, it, it never crossed my mind to not go through this competition. He didn't even want my mom to call me. He didn't want, he wanted me to get out of this house and find out now because he was afraid I wouldn't stick with the competition, but it's a promise I made to him. And just because he passed away doesn't mean I was about to break that promise. And uh, I'm glad I did because here I am, you know, fighting in the finals for that piece of glass, man. Uh, who's coming from your family and friends and, and training partners and coaches to Las Vegas now that you are fighting in the finals? Um, I got my mom and my sister. Unfortunately, one of my sisters, she's very far along in a pregnancy with my nephew, who I'm very excited for. I told her, you got to hold off till I get home. I want to hold my, my first nephew, but... Uh, um, 
no, I just got my mom and my sister, and then uh, my best friend, two of my best friends are coming. Uh, my coach is coming. Um, I think a lot of people are actually coming out, so it's going to be good to have have some support to go from fighting in front of like 20 people to now fighting in front of a decent crowd, and uh, you know having some familiar faces. It's going to be it's going to be a great experience, man. I just I look forward to it, and uh, I'm just going to leave it all out in the cage, man. And I'm glad. Uh, you know, I get to match up with Al. Al's a, a tough guy, and you know, I'm here to test myself. You know, I got to fight the number one pick on Cruz's team. Right. So let's fight the number one pick on my team. Let's go for it. Let's see what I got. You guys were on the same team. Were you friends? I mean, is is it strange for you to fight a guy that was your teammate? No, I mean, we all met each other under these circumstances, so you can't really, you can't really say it's awkward. I mean, coming from you know Alan Ogle's standpoint, it was different because they're roommates midway through the whole process having to fight each other i can see where that's weird but you know we all met each other under these circumstances we're out of the house you know business is business me and al have been civil towards each other ever since we found out we were fighting you know we'll we'll leave it at the cage doors and we'll go out there and fight and then afterwards we'll, we'll be buddies again you know we just we met each other under these circumstances so you have to accept having to match up with somebody if that's what it comes down to just a couple more things and then I'll really let you go. I'm in no rush. I am fascinated with facial hair. And you, my friend, have great facial hair. <laughs> What's the sort of motivation behind not only your hair, but you know, your facial hair, but your actual hair? Um, well, the thing with my hair is uh, I, was, I committed, I'm not going to cut my hair for a year. First week of May, it had been a year. But I got to the point where I'm like, I could donate my hair to Locks for Love. It'd be kind of cool. You know, my dad had cancer. He had to lose his hair. So I'm thinking... You know, I'm just going to kind of give back as much as I can. You know, I'll donate my hair. And uh, as far as the facial hair goes, it's always been a little tradition of mine, similar to Johnny Hendricks. Not that it came from him. It came from myself, my own thoughts, and my own, you know, natural thing I got going. <laughs> but uh, I never shave between camps. Like, you know, I start a fight camp. I just let my hair go until it's over. Unfortunately, this has been a very long fight camp. Um, you know, I started back in, like, November, so I haven't shaved since November. Wow. So fight camp's not over yet. So I gotta keep letting it go, man. I gotta keep the tradition alive. Now, it's part of your sort of look. Will you shave it when you're done with this fight? Oh, absolutely, man. I I want to look civilized <laughs> at some point. And plus, the only reason I'm not eating this yogurt right now is because <laughs> it would be so embarrassing. Because yogurt is my enemy with my beard. When I put a spoonful of yogurt in my mouth, it's like all in my beard. So, you know, the beard it's definitely not a. Uh, it's not food friendly. I'm ready to look a little bit civilized. You know. Okay, final thing. When you do get a chance to go back home, when this is all done after Friday night, what's the first thing that you will do? Uh, definitely going to go see my sister that couldn't come out to the finale. I mean, I, I was on the phone with her for like three and a half hours last night just talking. You know, uh, we, I, I have a very strong relationship with my family. You know, I talked to my mom. I talked to my other sister. But, you know, they're coming out here on, on Tuesday, so I kind of got off the phone with them so I could talk to my sister. We talked at like 3 in the morning. So, you know, I'm going to go out and see her, and, you know, she's due any moment. And I'm like, you gotta, you got to hold off, you know what I mean? you got to wait for me. So definitely going to go see my sister, and then I just, I'm going to have a big, uh, big coming home party right after that. Uh, my, sister's, my sister's boyfriend manages uh, my favorite bar. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to get all my friends together. It's a country bar, ride some mechanical bulls, you know, get, get country style. Well, Michael, enjoy this final week. You are an inspiration, man. You really uh, uh, represented yourself and your family and the sport very well on the show, and I congratulate you on making it to the finals. I cannot wait versus you, uh, you versus Al, on Friday Night Live on FX. Enjoy the food. Enjoy everything that comes with it, and uh, we look forward to the fight. Thank you so much, and uh, it was good to finally do an interview with you. I I've seen so many on the Internet, and now, you know, here I am sitting next to Ariel. Hey, 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 how you doing? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, buddy.